90 minutes of details you may have missed in zombies, let's go. Starting off with Shadows of Evil, there are plenty of Easter eggs around this map. The first one, I would hope everybody would know, you can skip rounds at the start of the match. Once you spawn in, you want to start shooting the Shadow Man right in his stupid little face. And you're going to be able to skip to round 5, 10, and 15. And with every round skip, you will gain more and more points. So say you're just tired of spawning in on round 1, you can choose what round you want to start off on. And I really like that, and I wish they would have implemented more Easter eggs similar to this, because rounds like 1 through 5 are just like a huge pain in the ass once you've played a map long enough. And I'll give you guys another softball one that you all should probably know. As you open the first door from Shadows of Evil, if you want to know exactly where the perk locations are, it's pretty easy to tell. Next to every single door, there's going to be a broken perk bottle, which will correspond with what perk is in that area. So no more guessing on where the perks are. This map literally tells you exactly where they are. The Harvest Pods were another re-return, very similar to the Dig Piles in Origins, and depending on when you harvest these things, and depending on what rarity it is, you can get a plethora of different things. You can get the RK5, the Elkar 9, the Locust, the KRM, the Bootlegger, Blood Money, Max Ammo, Double Points, Insta Kill, Fire Sail, Nuke, a Zombie, a Ray Gun, if you're lucky, the Part for the Apothecan Servant, a Bloodhound, a Haymaker, a Parasite, a Man of War, and a Death Machine. There are numerous of things that you can get, all depending on what rarity you open it up at. In Shadows of Evil, we got introduced to the Monkey Bombs replacement, the Lil Arnie. And there is a way to upgrade this on Shadows of Evil. The first thing you're going to need to do is get 100 kills with it, so make sure you keep track and get a lot of max ammos. And after you have the 100 set kills, you're going to throw three Lil Arnies at three very specific items. The first one is going to be a top hat on one of the mannequins in Nero's Lair. The next one is a bow tie in the boxing gym. And the last and final one is a walking cane in the ruby rabbit. Once you have done that, you want to go to the black lace burlesque and throw a little Arnie at the ritual stand, and then this will happen. And after that is done, congratulations, your little Arnies are now infinitely stronger. Now, Shadows of Evil also has a World War II reference. If you come right over to this corner and you listen very closely, you can hear today's sponsor, Enlisted. My bad. Enlisted is a free-to-play World War II multiplayer game available on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, PS4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. Now, you guys are kind of spoiled today because I didn't have any of that growing up. Now, if you are a huge history buff like me and you love historical accuracy in games, Enlisted is definitely something you need to try right now, especially when it comes to the weapons. There are hundreds of unique firearms from World War II that are in this game. And it's not just your average M1 Grand and MP40. There are so many other test weapons and rare prototypes that aren't even in any other game. And don't even get me started on the amount of armored cars, tanks, fighters, bombers, and all the other insane vehicles that you can play with. There's just so many toys and they're all historically accurate and it's so much fun. I love it. How often does a historically accurate, I repeat, historically accurate World War II game come across your lap? Not every day. So go get enlisted right now. And if you use my link down below to download the game, you're going to get some exclusive bonuses, three days of premium time, and several troop and weapon orders for a great start. So hurry up and join your boy on the battlefield and not playing with your toys in your room. In Shadows of Evil, you can also get a free Mega Gobblegum. You want to head over here to the Lion Statues and throw a Widow's Wine Grenade in each one of their mouths. Once you have successfully done that, one of the lion's mouths will give you a blank white gobblegum. You want to take that down to the candy store and place it right here on this plate, and then you want to complete a full round, and if you come back, you will have a free mega gobblegum. The hardest part about that step is getting all of the grenades in the lion's mouth. So you want to make sure a zombie is very far away, because if you only do three, you have to wait until you get four of them. You have to do all four in a row without missing. It's very hard, especially when you're playing solo. Well, it's not hard. It's, it's more tedious than anything. Now, did you also know in Shadows of Evil that you can upgrade the trip mines? Now, there are two different upgrade paths you can take. If you start one and then you try to do the other, I think you just lock yourself out of both. So you want to be very, very careful. Like once you buy trip mines, I would advise you to go straight to trying to upgrade them. So there is the cream cake trip mine. And all you have to do is successfully damage Devil of Donuts food carts around the map. There are going to be four of them. One is in the junction near the gobblegum machine. The other is in the canals near the gobblegum machine. There's also one in the Footlight District, 
right next to where the fuse can spawn. And the last and final one is in the waterfront district, right next to one of the box locations. And you want to throw a trip mine down and have a zombie walk near it and successfully damage each one of these carts. And once you do, it'll look a little something like this. The other upgrade path is the donuts trip mine and you pretty much do the same exact thing except for kind of reverse you want to damage the holly's cream cake food carts the first one is in the junction near stamina up the next one is in the canals in front of the viable door towards the ruby rabbit and the last and final one is in the footlight district in front of the perca cola machine and once you have done it it'll look a little something like this There are two musical easter eggs on Shadows of Evil. The main one that probably everyone knows that is extremely copyright claimed, and I cannot let you guys listen to that, is Snakeskin Boots. There are going to be three little wooden radios scattered around the map. One is in the Boxing Gym, the next one is in the Ruby Rabbit, and the last and final one is in the Footlight District on a bench, right up here in this train station. And all you want to do is hold F, X, whatever you're playing on, and the musical easter egg Snakeskin Boots will start playing. The last song that you can activate is going to be Cold Hard Cash. There will be a bunch of parts for a microphone stand scattered throughout the map. All you gotta do is pick them all up. The first one is the wire. This one is under the stairs next to the ruby rabbit. The next one is a microphone stand located in Nero's lair. The last and final one is going to be the microphone itself, which is located in the subway area right next to this trash can. Once you have done that, you want to head back to the black lace burlesque, interact with the microphone stand, and this song will start playing. A man once waltzed into a club and swept me off my feet now what kind of zombie map would it be if there wasn't a jump scare once you have a sniper you want to head down to the docks and look right up here and this happens now there is a cool noir mode which is basically a black and white mode that you can activate simply by interacting with this picture right here but do beware once you do it there's no going back now there is a 500 point easter egg that also has to do with Sal DeLuca from Mob of the Dead, and that is located right outside of spawn. If you have a Widow's Wine Grenade, it makes this infinitely easier. You want to toss it, write this little note on this jacket, and if you do it successfully, you will gain 500 points. Now if you're ever walking around Shadows of Evil and you're like, hey man, these posters look oddly similar, that is because this Escape the Tomb poster was actually originally in Mob of the Dead. It's the poster that you knock off the wall with the Hell's Redeemer. There are actually loads and loads of references to Mob of the Dead in this map. And speaking of references to Mob of the Dead, there is also a map of Alcatraz located in the subway. It's kind of hard to see with all this other stuff over top of it, but it just adds to the numerous references of Mob of the Dead. And even Jack Vincent himself has a lot of references to the mobsters from Mob of the Dead. I once busted a little weasel who tried to use one of these to blast open a bank safe. Dumbass nearly blew himself up. Could have used this when I busted Sal's liquor joint. <laughs> Finn O'Leary's whiskey tasted better than this shit. What is this? One of Billy Handsome's trophies? What's even weirder though is down at the waterfront rift area, there is a map of Origins sitting right here on this table. Why? No idea. And speaking of references, one of them, if you go over here to the cinema and you look at the date, it says November 6th. Nova 6, November 6th, and that also happened to be the day that. Black Ops dropped. Now, I hope this reference is actually correct, but if you go down to the docks, there's a light post with a green light on it, and this might be a reference to the most overrated book in existence, The Great Gatsby, where the character constantly stares at a green light at the end of a dock on the opposite side of the bay. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did not know this or get the reference because that book is wildly overrated. I think that's because it's like one of the only decent books that they force you to read in like high school. Now, located all throughout the map, there are tons of stores with wildly different names. And in case you didn't know, all of these stores are actually references to people that worked on the game. Example, you have Chang's Laundry, and Yao Chang was a senior character artist. You have CJ's Printing Ink, and CJ Connie was a producer. You have Zach's Hats, which was Zach Gonzalez, an associate producer. You have, I don't know if you guys are going to get this one, Blundell's Baked Goods, who, aka Jason Blundell, kind of the dude that ran everything. You also have Schmitz, who is G. Henry Schmidt, a game designer. You have Harsha's Hotel, who is Ken Harsha, an art director. You also have Harsha's Cigarette, who was the same person. You have Zandy's Smoke Lounge, Ali Zandy, a level designer. You have Nesbitt's Cafe, aka Justin Nesbitt, a level designer. And there's also some more Mob the Dead references. You have DeLuca Shipping, aka Sal DeLuca. 
You got Al's Barbershop, which was Al Weasel Arlington. You have O'Leary's B&L, who was Finn O'Leary. So like I said, this map was just teeming with Mob the Dead and so many references. But it does not stop there, because if you look around the map, you will also see tons of boxing posters, and these boxing posters are also people that worked on the game. You have Huska, an environment artist, versus Livingston, the tech lead of zombies. You have Solder versus Saunders, a CG artist versus level designer. You have Nesbitt versus Zandi, a level builder versus a level designer slash artist. And these are just scattered all throughout the game. And it keeps going because if you go to the boxing gym, all of these dudes on the wall are Treyarch employees. They're not just randy people that they're like, hey, let's just use this random. It seems like every one of these people actually worked on the game. And I really like that. I love when they give shout outs to the people that actually made this game. Now let's take a little side note here. There are plenty of ciphers around the map. The first one is going to read, the elders will continue to seed space and time. I must lead them to the place they cannot see. The next cipher reads, although they have discovered the way, premise will fail. The third cipher reads, M is interested in these worthless beings. All of his work will be undone. The fourth cipher reads, the formless one will be their downfall. And the last cipher reads, I am willing to do what must be done. The plan must not fail. And similar to a lot of other maps, there are multiple scraps of paper located throughout the map. And once you get all the scraps of paper put together, you get this image. And once we had put this image back together, it kind of gave us a whole new direction for where Zombies was heading versus where it had been. Now, the last thing I got for you guys about Shadows of Evil is going to be the Margwa Mask, a wildly forgotten thing nowadays. To get this, you're going to first have to have killed five Margwas. And then once you have done that, you want to take a ride on the tram. There will be six Margwa hearts along the way, and you want to shoot every single one of them. As you are leaving the waterfront, it's going to be on the left side, and it will be on the blue Morgue City gas and electric sign. Also, as you leave the waterfront on the left side, on the watermelon poster on the Connie building, right after the previous Margwa heart. Now, if you are heading from waterfront to footlight, the next one will be on the Devil of Donuts sign right before the Holly's Cream Cake poster. As you are leaving the footlight district on the right side, it will be on a coffee neon sign. Next one is also as you are leaving the Footlight District on the right side, it will be on the white theater sign. And the last one is as you are leaving Canals on the left side, it will be on the Y of the Ruby Rabbit sign. And once you have done all that, the Margwa head will be in one of four locations, on the balcony on the third floor of the Ruby Rabbit, on the table in Nero's Landing, under the lockers in the boxing area, or on the stage in the Black Lace Burlesque. And once you have the Margwa head, it gives you a, a little bit more protection against the Margwa's slam attack. Heading over to Der Eisendrack, there are tons of easter eggs just all over this map. The first one we're going to talk about is the Plunger Easter Egg. To do this, you're going to want to head over to the Clock Tower and blow open this hole. This is also the thing you would have to do to get the Fire Bow. You're going to want to place your Ragnaroks behind the clock. Then come down to the bottom floor and interact with this. This is going to start the clock. Now you want to stop the clock at 935. And if you have successfully stopped the clock at 935, you want to head down to the Pyramid and start wall running. You will eventually go back in time, and once you're back in time, you can go right up to this table and grab the plunger. It's a little easier to do if you're doing it with multiple people because they can kind of help you with the clock, but it is definitely achievable solo. And you can also upgrade the plunger by killing a panzer. Once you have killed a panzer or dealt the killing blow, you will get the upgraded plunger, which is kind of like a fiery version of it, and for one minute, it is an insta-kill, so you can knock out panzers and or zombies with it. There's also a little side easter egg that has to do with the upgraded plunger over here in the speed cola area. If you get enough zombie kills next to this newspaper, it will eventually change and have an entire new meaning. I think all of that is a little, little much to hear about zombies in London, but hey, I don't make the easter eggs, I just tell you guys about them. Now there are three musical easter eggs located around the map. The first one is going to be dead again, and this one is your stereotypical music easter egg. Three teddy bears located around the map. First one is in Samantha's bedroom right here on this chair. The next one is in the cell opposite side of Jug. This one's a little hard to see. And the last one is down by the rocket pad sitting passenger on this truck. And once you have done that, this song will start playing. Another little musical easter egg that's not really like a, a map easter egg, more like a you activate it and a tune plays for a little bit and you can constantly reactivate it, is a modified version of Samantha's Lullaby. So if you activate the music box in Samantha's bedroom, this song will start playing.
And the last kind of like final musical Easter egg, well, this, well, there's technically one more after this, is going to be uh, this. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it because I already know I'm gonna get it wrong, but there are three gramophones around the map and you wanna activate every single one. The first one is in Samantha's bedroom. The next one is in the control room and the last and final one is in the pyramid room. You activate all of them and this happens. by the work of our adversaries. Now there is another little kind of music Easter egg, and this is the disco Easter egg. So once you are in the control room, you want to shoot up here and at the moon and the rocket globe. And once they are next to each other, if you shoot them, this starts happening. not even the beginning of all of the easter eggs on this map there's also the skeleton easter egg you can change all of the zombies into skeletons for however long you want if you have the gobble gum in plain sight it's going to make this step so much easier there are three skulls located around the map and if you use the in plain sight gobble gum you can very easily see them and you want to take your bow around the map and shoot every single one and you can do this in any particular order. The first one is going to be located right next to Double Tap. The next one will be over here by Mule Kick. And the third and final one will be overlooking the courtyard. And once you have done that, the zombies spawning in from there on out will be skeletons. And if at any point you want to change them back to zombies, all you have to do is come over here and interact with these three skulls. And bam, now they're zombies again. Now there is a way to get a free Mega Gobble Gum. And this one is definitely not as easy as Shadows of Evil. But what you're going to want to do is head into the teleporter room and pick up this plant. Now you're going to want to travel back in time by doing the wisp step. While you're in the past, you want to put this plant right back where you originally got it. And then once you return to the present, the plant will be all grown up and you can get your free gobble gum. A little bit more tedious than just getting Widow's Wine and tossing them in lion's mouth. Now, if you've ever wondered about the second tram and spawn, well, you're in luck because there is a way to get it. Once you spawn in, you immediately want to toss your grenades right inside of this tram. And if you have successfully done that, every fifth fuse that you use will bring up the second tram and it will have way better goodies than the other one. You can get like upgraded guns, monkey bombs, all sorts of goodies. But again, it's only on the fifth tram fuse. Located around Horizon Track, there are plenty of posters. But if you find this one, you might notice something very, very interesting about it. The guy in the background that is mourning his master may or may not be Leroy, I refuse to call him Arthur, from Buried. In Black Ops 3, we learned that Leroy actually has a pretty significant role in the overall zombie storyline, and this was a pretty interesting way to show it. You really wouldn't recognize it right away that it's him until someone kind of points it out to you. Next to Samantha's room, there is a projection room, and in that projection room, you can see tons of images that kind of give you the build-up to the moon base. You have Griffin Station Phase 1 underway, you have a deceased test subject, you have the test subject's preparations, where we can see that Dempsey is being put in the pod that we later get a little bit more information when we do the Easter egg. You have them examining a keeper's body, and you also have the excavation of the pyramid that we eventually got on Moon. So it's not too deep into the overall lore, but it does give us a little bit of information about the lead up to certain maps and certain events. Now, Der Eisendrak is a very real place. It is actually based off the, I'm gonna butcher this, Hohenwerfen Castle in Austria. And if you look at pictures of this place side by side, it is very, very scary about how accurate some of these places are. Now, naturally, the spawn area is a little bit different, and the tram isn't exactly the one in real life that you see in game. But overall, Treyarch did a really, really good job of kind of laying out the map almost exactly like the real life thing. 
And I will link a video down below of the Smith Blaze. He actually went to this place and did a really good vlog of the overall thing. So if you want to see more about that, check out the link. It'll be down there below in the description. But this castle is very, very interesting and it's very old. It was built in 1075. Like that doesn't even seem like a real year. And really up until common day, it was really like your stereotypical uh, European evil kings and evil shit. But in World War II, it served as a Nazi education camp. And after the war, it was used as a training camp for the Austrian police. Nowadays, it's literally just a tourist attraction. And it's been in multiple different movies and uh, video games, mainly being Call of Duty Black Ops 3. But I can't stress this enough. Go watch the Smith Plays video. It's, it's seven years old at this point, I think. But it's very, very good. Around Eisendrack, there are plenty of books. You have some like some field operations manuals, German military zombie manuals, spirits and huntings of ancient places. But one that I thought was very, very interesting and kind of fit with the whole Leroy thing was a book called Lost Ghost Towns of the Old West. It's all the little details about zombies, especially stuff like this that I just absolutely love. Now, if we head back to Samantha's room for a bit, you're going to see tons of drawings on the wall. And a lot of these drawings have some sort of significance. And at the time when this map came out, we really didn't know too much about where the story was going. But going back and looking at it with a little bit of hindsight, it all makes sense. The first picture, we have what looks to be like a sun with a smiley face and a house in the middle of like a grassy field. We also have Samantha and Fluffy being best friends forever. We also have this image, which looks like a chemistry set or something like that, with also what appears to be like a locked box labeled secrets. And on the bottom, it says Dr. Groff has secrets. We also have what appears to be Samantha riding a fucking dragon. And it says, Daddy says there used to be dragons a long time ago. This giving us a lot of hints on what's to come. And we also have Samantha in what appears to be a very, very dark forest. We also have one that Samantha drew of her daddy. You can see his bald little head right there. But of what appears to be a portal with a door inside. We also have this one, which <laughs> I don't even know where to begin on this one. You got Samantha. You have a train just dicking around in the background. You got a teddy bear. You got a symbol monkey riding a rocket. You got a bed. I don't, I don't even know where to begin with this one, to be honest with you. And in my opinion, the creepiest one has to be the one where a keeper opens a teleporter and visits Samantha at night because... Just first of all, look at this picture. It's absolutely insane. But on Samantha's bed, it says me with a smiley face on it. And you would think a kid going through something like this would be absolutely terrified. So not really too much storyline information, but just enough to pique your interest. Now, there are tons of posters located around the map, and they all are in German. And if we translate them, we get the summer in resin, flowers in every valley, vacation in Germany, join us, day of defense, Everything darkening, the enemy sees your light, and Germany Fortress of Iron Dragons. Some of these posters, not gonna lie, look pretty badass. Similar to Shadows of Evil, how you could get the Margwa head, you can also get the Panzer helmet. And this one is very, very easy, yet not easy to get. If you mess up, you, you kind of just lock yourself out of it. But there are going to be three Panzer Claws around the map, and you're going to want to shoot them down and then use them to kill a Panzer. The first one is going to be in the ceiling next to the Mule Kick room, and you want to shoot that down, lead a Panzer down this area, and then shoot it again so that way it goes after the Panzer and hopefully kills it. The next one is going to be on the walkway outside near the Dragon. Again, shoot this one down, wait for another Panzer to come by, and then kill it. Next one is going to be down the hall from the Power Switch. Again, shoot it down, wait for a Panzer, shoot it. And if you have successfully done all of that, congrats, now you have the Panzer Helmet. And this will significantly help you against panzers by making you pretty much immune to their melee attacks. Now, if only we could do something about them shock charge attacks, because that's where it's at. Next up, we have the BRM Easter egg. You can find the BRM wall by in Durizen Drag. All you have to do is activate the no gravity and then run around the entire thing, hitting all of these little square switches. If you have successfully done that, congrats. Now you can find the BRM wall by located right here. This is a very simple and easy thing to do. And in my opinion, it's not really worth it. I'm not really a big BRM kind of guy. The last thing I have for you is the spawn Easter egg that was only recently solved a couple years ago. To do this, you're going to want to stay, I believe, on round one and two. I think if you go any farther, I'm not sure you can do this or not. I'm not going to lie. I have no idea. But you want to make sure all of the zombies break down every barricade and all of the windows do not have any barricades on them. Now, you want to run through and put two boards on each window. After you've done that, you want to buy the RK5, add two more boards to every single window yet again. Then after you have done that, you want to buy the Shiva. Then go around and add one board to every single window. So you want every window to have five boards. Once you have done that, buy the RK5 and immediately sprint to this door right over here. If you have successfully done that, you can see this. 
and this is one of the developers and their family. There is no way in hell we would have ever solved this if it wasn't for people creating things to help us solve Easter eggs because the, who would have ever done this in a million years? It really makes you think like what other zombie secrets are still out there that have like really dumb steps like this that we'll just never figure out. Last but not least, we do have a ton of ciphers. There, there's a lot on this map. First one reads, Father introduced me to a new friend that just arrived. His name is Edward. He is nice, but he doesn't like to share the toys. Cipher 2. The last test subject, the Mexican, died, but during the autopsy, I have discovered the key to create the undead army that we seek. We are now ready to capture the four test subjects identified in Report 44. Cipher 3. After the great battle, they stood upon the mound. Their light shone down and cleansed all the sickness for as far as the eye could see. They are the first, they are the last. Visions of fractuated worlds and strange rooms haunted our dreams. Cypher 4. I have received another toy posted by M. Cypher 5. I met the reporter who was to deliver the artifact. He said he was going to bring it in his truck and a crate. But when I arrived, the reporter was babbling and acting wildly, waving a letter in his hand telling me to stay away. The crate containing the artifact had been sealed away with some ancient magic. When I told him I must have the artifact and move toward the crate, he attacked me. I acted in self-defense, stabbing him in the chest. Cypher 6. Mission Log Entry 45. I am over the site looking down through the open door. I can see weird distortion below me like a localized aura borealis. I would normally cancel the operation, but we don't have time. Luckily, I have taken Experimental Weapon Version 3 that no one has seen before from my previous missions. Never say never, Peter. Cypher 7. After the success at the Rising Sun facility, Division 9 is moving with Phase 2. The island facility is now operational and initial testing is underway. Cypher 8. Like I said, there's a lot. We have discovered that there are beings that can travel between dimensions without the aid of teleporters. Cypher 9. This is kind of like a graph thing that somebody smarter than me definitely did because I would never do this. Division 9 has completed the resurrection of the Ancient Beast for your Western Front. We expect Group 935 to reciprocate the favor. Cypher 10. I cannot appear directly to you. I can only help you in your way. You guys are really making hard work of this. M. Cypher 11. After sending him on countless suicide missions, he refuses to die. He is in your hands now. Don't fail us. Again, tons of ciphers, and that's not even the end of it. You have your typical scraps of paper, and this really set up the next map for us. Because once you put all these scraps of paper together, you get this image, which is all written in Japanese. This reads, To my beloved Emperor, It has been several months since I last received orders from you. I cannot help but say that I am at my wit's end. Since I have landed on the island, I, your foolish servant, have continued my inspection and recording of Division 9's activities. However, despite being directly dispatched by you, they regard my work with suspicious eyes. As such, I have been barred from and forbidden access to almost all research areas. The situations continue to worsen. The installation commander ordered me to hand over my weapons for the duration of my stay. If he hadn't shown me the relevant papers ordering me to comply to maintain security, marked with your signature and seal, I would no doubt have objected. I have never raised any doubts whatsoever concerning your judgment, sir, but I am concerned that these circumstances may prove a great hindrance to my mission. I understand how important the alliance is for a righteous cause and final victory, but the influence of German Operative Force Group 935 has become increasingly worrisome. Over the last few months, the number of officers they have here has increased. I cannot help but think that it is they who are propelling the plan. Judging by what I have seen, the research done by Division 9 has been far beyond acceptable. In fact, their aberrational methods of weapons research can only be described as abnormal. Not only do they use prisoners of war for living body tests, but they also have been trying to control the supernatural powers of Element 115. I therefore think that if we permit them to continue their work, dark clouds may soon loom over our great country. I, your foolish servant, will continue to watch them and will report to you whenever possible. If the idea so pleases you, I think it is necessary that you intervene directly in order for us to better understand the aim of Division 9's research and make clear the ramifications of their plans. I hope you receive this message, your humble servant, Takio Masaki. Moving on to Zetsubo Nishima, we got two musical easter eggs on this map. The first one is going to be Dead Flowers. There are three sock monkeys around the map, and you can hit them in any particular order. The first one is located over here next to the blue 115 water to the left of this perk machine. The next one is going to be down near the KT4 workbench, and the last and final one is going to be on the top floor of Lab B. The 
next musical easter egg is going to be like a little remix of Samantha's lullaby. To do this, you want to head down to the purple water, and these bulbs on the wall, you have to fill them with a certain amount of water. And the order goes like this. The first bulb you only want to fill once, the next one you want to fill three times, then five, six, seven, and five. And if you have done it correctly, you can interact with the last bulb and this starts playing. Now one cool thing that Zetsubo and Ashima did that we really don't see too much of in zombies is a round specific easter egg. Once you have gotten to round 50, if you're over here near lab B and you look off in the distance, you can see a large gigantic ass monster menacingly and creepily walking in the distance. There really is nothing much more to this easter egg other than that, but it's still one of those rare cases where we have a round specific easter egg like this and we really don't see too much of that besides like classified and that's a shame. Now there is a cool easter egg where you can make your player throw up. All you have to do is eat a plant that gives you a free perk while not being able to hold any more perks. So for an example, if you have perkaholic and you do the free perk easter egg and you try to get a free perk, your player will throw up like this. And to do this, it's actually very, very simple. You're going to want to water a plant with every single type of water. So you're going to want to water it with green, blue, and purple water every single round. And you do not want to fertilize it with the KT4. I repeat, do not do that. And if you do it correctly, you will get a really good chance of spawning in one of these fruit plants. And all you gotta do is eat it and watch your character do this. We nurture you from seed and still you betray us. Now there is a jump scare on this map, and in my opinion, it's one of the more scary ones we've seen in Call of Duty Zombies, and I believe you can only do this in co-op. I don't think you can do this single player. So you want to come down here to the test specimens room. You want to have a sniper rifle, and this back right one, you want to look at it very, very carefully and go up and down on it to make sure you hit the sweet spot. And once you have done that, a doppelganger will randomly spawn in, and once you approach it, this happens. Now remember how in Origins you could get the golden helmet and the shovel? Well in Zetsubo no Shima you can get, wait for it, a golden bucket. And this golden bucket allows you to have infinite uses of whatever water is stored in it. And you can swap between what waters are stored in it without actually having to go and fill it up. To get this you're going to need the skull of Nansapui and to have grown every type of plant. So you're going to need to have grown the fruit bearing plant like I mentioned previously which is one of every type of water. You're going to need to grow a plant that only uses blue water so all three rounds you have to use blue water and you have to do the same with green and purple and you also have to do a plant where you do not water it whatsoever so once you have spent countless rounds doing all of that you want to head down here to the living quarters right next to the purple water and use the mesmerize ability on this wall to show the rest of this poster once you have done that you want to head down underneath lab b and use the mesmerize ability again on these vines the vine should go away and reveal a new planter. You can plant your bucket inside of that, and once you have done that, three new ones will sprout up. You're going to need tons of seeds for this stupid <laughs> golden bucket. But like I said, three new planters pop up. You want to plant the seed in every single one, and immediately the plant that likes to attract zombies and kill them will spawn up, and you have to let each of those plants kill enough zombies. Once they have killed enough zombies, they will retract back down into earth, and you can go up to the previous plant and collect your golden bucket. Like I said, it gives you infinite water. In my opinion, it's not really that worth it. 
you have to do so much like bullshit and just like play farmville for so long in zombies all for infinite water that you can just kind of have infinite already it don't make much sense to me and speaking of whole planting and seeds thing if you were wanting to know what exactly happens when you do certain things let me tell you if you plant a seed and use all blue water it's going to behave very similar to a harvest pod from shadows of evil where you get like kind of like random things and if you use the kt4 on it to basically fertilize it every single round you get better things you get like the symbol monkey an empty perk bottle and even a part for the easter egg so that's what the blue water does now if you use green water all the rounds you get this cool little plant that will hold a zombie for you and it'll slowly kill the zombie over time if you use the kt4 on it and fertilize it it'll be able to hold the zombie a lot longer now if you use purple water it's going to give you that plant that likes to attract zombies and kill them and if you get it fertilized it will be able to last a lot longer and kill a lot more zombies now, like I said previously, if you use all three main types of water, you're going to have a much higher chance to get a fruit bearing plant. But if that doesn't happen, you're going to get whatever the last kind of water you use. So if the last water that you added was blue, you're going to get a harvest pod thing. If the last water you added was green, you're going to get the zombie babysitter. And if the last water you used was purple, it's the killing zombie plant. But if you use all three types of water and you get it fertilized by the KT4, you have a much higher chance to get a clone plant. And what this does is actually like who's who but infinitely better so you can imprint yourself on this plant and whatever you had so like ammo perks and all that other fun stuff whatever you had the second you die you immediately spawn back in with all the stuff that you imprinted with so like i said it's a much better version of who's who now did you also know that in zetsubonashima you can play as a spider and you will get one use per round and it's going to last you for almost a minute and it's really not useful for like killing zombies, but it's mainly used as a I'm about to die and I need to get out of this real quick. That's what I would use it for. Other than that, there really isn't like much use for it whatsoever. But to obtain this, you're going to have to have done a couple things. Number one, all your trials need to be done. Number two, you're going to need the electrified zombie shield. Number three, you're going to need the skull of Nan Safwi. And lastly, the cage in lab A has to be on the ground level, or at the very least, you have to have gotten the spider venom, the part that you needed for the KT4. Now all you have to do is wait for a spider round. Use the Skull of Van Sapwee's mesmerize ability to find the spider with the red mist. Keep that little bastard alive. You're going to want to take that little spider around to all three different element 115 pools. So the green, the blue, and the purple. You're going to want to let that spider drink from every single one. Now that he's gotten his H2O in, you want to head back to the cage on lab A, get him caught inside, pull the cage up, then melee the control panel with the electrified zombie shield. That will send it completely underground. Now you want to wait for another spider round and kill all the spiders. But these spiders will be a little stronger and more aggressive, so watch out. Once that round is over and the round changes, raise the cage up from lab A, that spider will now be replaced with a cocoon, and then extract the venom from the spider, pick it up. Congrats, now you have the spider bait equipment. You can activate it once around, and like I said, it's really only good like if you're about to die, and that's your only option. Other than that, it's, you got a lot of stuff you have to do, man. It's not worth it. And speaking of spiders, I would hope you would know about the spider boss fight. I, I really hope you do. All you need is the KT4. Come over here, shoot this little spider web, run inside, fight the giant spider boss. It's actually really, really easy. And once you have successfully defeated it, you get a part for the upgraded KT4 and you get access to Widow's Wine. Like I said, I, I would hope you have known about that by now. Now, hopefully this next thing you didn't know about, but did you know you can get a friendly thrasher to aid you in your zombie killing epidemic? All you're going to need is the upgraded KT4 and the Skull of Nan Sapwi. You want to head down into the test subjects area of the bunker, use the Skull's Mesmerize ability on this wall, shoot it with the KT4, that's going to reveal this spore. Get a zombie next to the spore, make the spore explode, he will turn into a thrasher, and congrats, that thrasher is now on your side. He will last for quite a long time, he's very powerful, but he's kind of just slow. Like, he doesn't kill zombies really fast. But he does help you kill zombies, and he is your best friend for life now, and you're stuck with him, and if you ever do anything to harm him, I will find you. And speaking of thrashers, if you are playing co-op, and you happen to go down next to a thrasher, he will pick you up and put you in his belly, and congrats, now you're with him for life now. He's gonna carry you around the map until you bleed out. And if your friends were wanting to pick you up, well, they have to kill the thrasher first before they can get to you. And I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the cooler things that Treyarch has like ever added. It's such a small thing, but I still think it's just so freaking cool. 
There's also some creepy hallucinations that you can encounter while you're playing Zetsubo no Shima. All you have to do is sit inside of a spore until you start hearing voices, like your character has to cough for a long time, and then walk around the map to three different locations and uh, this happens. <laughs> Now let's talk a little bit about history, because we all know history is pretty based. Division 9 was made up for the zombie verse. Treyarch decided to add it in here, but did you know that Division 9 is based off of reality? It all dates back to World War II and Unit 731. Unit 731 was basically the Japanese version of Group 935, in, in a way, in a short explanation way. Unit 731 was officially divided in eight divisions, with Treyarch adding Division 9, whose whole purpose was to research 115 and explore its potential. But Unit 731 and the Japanese in general in World War II, in my opinion, were way more evil than the Nazis. Unit 731 was a biological and chemical warfare unit set up in 1938 in Manchuria, and one of their goals was to develop biological weapons and they used Chinese civilians and POWs as human guinea pigs to study the effects. A lot of these prisoners were murdered, were used in vivisection and other terrible medical experiments, such as living humans being infected with very deadly diseases such as the plague and anthrax, and then getting cut open without anesthesia to see how these diseases affected the organs. Female prisoners were forced to become pregnant and then used as experiments. And they also used various weapons on live humans, such as grenades, trying to figure out what distances worked best. They used flamethrowers on people. They also used people tied to stakes to test out pathogen releasing bombs, chemical weapons, explosive weapons, bayonets, knives, and all sorts of- Unit 731 was evil as shit. They also did like a bunch of stupid tests that had nothing to do. They injected like horse urine into prisoners' kidneys, amputated limbs, re-sewing them on to other stumps, just doing evil shit for no reason. I tell you this mainly because this whole sort of history has been lost and I feel like a lot more people should know the actual barbaricness of Unit 731, AKA Division 9. A lot of people don't know that the Japanese were actually pretty freaking evil back in the day. Okay, so now that we've got all depressed and everything, uh, let's talk more about Easter eggs and stuff. You can find the Mob of the Dead plane sometimes flying up in the sky if you're lucky enough. Eventually, you can catch it coming out of a portal and disappearing in itself. And very similar to that, the boat from Shadows of Evil can also be seen outside of the map. I'm not sure if this was like supposed to be the exact one from Shadows of Evil or if this was just like a reused asset, but I still thought it was cool enough to point out. Now, one thing that I really like about Zetsubo Nishima is that it made the map kind of spooky. Definitely not like Verruckt spooky, but they did add a lot of background noise that I actually really love. Randomly around the map, you can hear that same whispering that you would have heard in Shinonuma. You can also hear what seems to be like screaming or people getting tortured in various windows throughout the map. And in the Pack-a-Punch area, you can also hear the same sound that you would have heard in Verruckt and Shinonuma around electrical equipment.
And that's not all. As I was exploring the map, I was able to find the lullaby that has been with us since World at War over here next to this downed US plane. It's very refreshing hearing that lullaby. We haven't heard that in a while in these videos. And the last two things I have for you before we get to all the ciphers and everything, I found some Japanese writings on the wall. And using Google Translate to roughly translate it, this one I believe says evil lurks or evil is here or something along those lines. While this one I believe says something along the lines of fated to die or it is your fate to die, something like that. Now Zetsuma Nishima also has Tons of ciphers, and they read as follows. Of the four test subjects highlighted in Report 44, one of the brothers has died before we could reach him in the battle. The other is still at large in the city. Cipher 2. Entry 58. We have been having power fluctuations in the past couple days. Consequently, we have to rely more and more on backup generators. It's strange. Ever since we have been having issues with the power, people are reported hearing voices coming from the walls. They say they can hear quiet sobbing from a boy and a girl, as well as a man shouting for children to close the windows. I have not heard the voices, but I admit something feels different about this place. Cypher 3. My name is my name. My name. Oh yes, it is Gersh. How long have I been floating? Minutes? Years? Where is now? I guess I can forgive Yuri. I quite like my new form. Hmm. Where am I now? A city on fire by a river. I know this place. Finally, I am home. Cypher 4. Comrade, I hope these schematics reach you in time so our scientists can make full use of them. For I know the Western Front is on the brink of collapse, these schematics I have stolen from Group 935 will enable us to construct our own wonder weapons which will help us turn the tide of the war and give us victory over the German pigs. I fear, however, I will not live to see this. V. Cypher 5. Edward, as you know, it is imperative you and the group find the exact versions of yourself that I have highlighted in each universe. Only by killing that version of yourself and that particular universe to that particular moment in time will we be successful once each of your other selves are killed across all universes. Remember, we are only immune because we opened the portal in France, but I'm afraid this might not be permanent. I fear there is something M isn't telling me and that there is not much time left for us. Cypher 6. Sophia. Cyclic redundancy check equal fail. Cypher 7. I shut down power for the night. We must conserve the gasoline, so I am told. Because the Emperor is in doubt of the usefulness of our research here at the Rising Sun facility, and that resupplying the facility will now occur every other month rather than our usual scheduled weekly drops. However, the new meteor site produces higher grade samples, ones we can actually use. Wait, is that a plane I hear? The resupply is not scheduled for another week. I see a bright light in the sky. Cypher 8. Richtofen must understand that using these teleporters to jump between dimensions is both dangerous and imprecise. At any point, the fabric of space and time could collapse if the improper amounts of 115 are not maintained. I am also concerned about the unknown effects of trans-dimensional jumps. I have noticed even with my brief travels that new memories and emotions have flooded my mind, suddenly appearing from nowhere. I am also sure something is happening on a molecular level as well. Cypher 9. Entry 56. Just finished a very long shift. We were awaiting the test subject's arrival from the castle, but they never showed. Those group 935 pigs didn't even bother to radio the asylum to let us know that they were not coming. I'm getting sick of those arrogant scientists. They have given the asylum the nickname Veruct Asylum. I loathe it. We are as every bit as important to the completion of the project as they are. Cypher 10. Urgent telegram. We have just received word that the private plane carrying the expedition crew encountered freak atmospheric event which caused it to crash, killing all on board including the famous explorers Brock and Gary. This comes week after their announcement about the location of Shangri-La. Cypher 11. Division 9. Project D. Update to Group 935. The specimens have been manufactured to be asexual. We felt it was best to remove the primal urges of the sexes as this will make them far easier to control. That being said, they are still extremely dangerous. You must have mechanical control collars and proper frequencies set and applied when these specimens reach the juvenile stage. After seeing what they are capable of, your stalemate on the eastern front with the Russians will soon come to an end. Cypher 12. While the loss of the Rising Sun facility was unfortunate, the Emperor was so impressed with our final results that he has approved the construction of the new Division 9 facility on the island that we selected. He assured me personally that he will spare no expense in advancing our research. You and I both know that what we accomplish at this new facility will win the war for Japan. 
There is also scraps of paper that when put together and deciphered, you get this message. Maxis, have you found the space-time coordinates for the other individuals I asked for? It's imperative that we find them as well. You must trust me on this. For my plan to work, we need their blood. And last but not least, there is a letter on the map that's written in Japanese, no ciphers needed, that reads as follows. Although we have tried to eliminate him, making it seem as if he were killed in an accident, he has managed to escape every time by some miracle. The fact that he is regarded as a hero by the commoners is unbearable, and it shall eventually lead to the existence of myself being questioned. He taints the commoners' belief in myself, I who should be held in the highest regard by them. But it is no longer necessary for me to bear this suffering any longer. I have given the order to the operatives in Division 9. They must not let Takio Masaki leave the island alive. Moving on to Gorod Krobi, there are three musical easter eggs around the map. The first one is Dead Ended, and this one can be activated by hitting three vodka bottles around the map. The first one is on the bottom of the department store, sitting right here on this couch. The next one is between the department store and the operations bunker, chilling on the floor. And the last and final one is over here in the supply depot. Once you hit them all, this song will start playing. You can also activate Ace of Spades, and I can't let you listen to that whatsoever. But this can be activated by hitting three Ace of Spade cards around the map. The first one is on a blackboard in the same room as a Double Tap. The next one is on Sophia's desk in the Dragon Command Center. And the last and final one is on the table to the right of Pack-a-Punch. And again, uh, I cannot let you listen to that one. Now there is one more musical Easter egg called Samantha's Sorrow. And this one actually has like a little Easter egg that goes along with it. To start, you're going to need monkey bombs, and you want to throw monkey bombs in three different areas that are being set on fire by the dragons. Once you have done that, go back to spawn. There will be a Samantha doll right in front of this tombstone. Once you activate it, a hide-and-seek easter egg begins. You have a limited time to find five Samantha dolls around the map. They're going to be in random locations, but they're pretty easy to find. You're going to hear the lullaby when you get close to them, and that lullaby's range is actually pretty far, so it'll be pretty easy to pin down where exactly these are. And if you do not hit all the dolls in time, just go back to the grave and hit the Samantha doll to restart it. But once you have collected all five of these Samantha dolls, head back to the grave, interact with the doll, a skeleton hand will come up, grab it, give you a max ammo, and start playing this. somewhat related to music in a weird way around the map there are several musical sheets on pianos and the song that it is showing is called revelations which gives you a little hint to the next zombies map now with gorod Krobi, we got some time trials there are four time trials that you can complete giving you different rewards if you complete the first one which is complete round five in less than five minutes you will be rewarded with the wrench and all these rewards can be found in the operations bunker and if you complete round 10 and 13 minutes you're going to get the mace and if you complete round 15 and less than 24 minutes, you're going to get the slash and burn. And if you can complete round 20 and less than 32 minutes, you're going to get Fury Song, which is a pretty decent melee weapon. It's a one hit kill up until round 35. Now, hopefully you know how to obtain the Dragon Strike. Once you go to Pack Punch, you want to interact with this, do the lockdowns, and then you get the Dragon Strike. But there is also a way to upgrade it. To upgrade it, you're going to want to get around 40 kills with the regular Dragon Strike. You'll know you have done it when you hear a giant dragon roar that sounds like very, very different from all the other dragon roars. And once you have done that, outside of the map, there's going to be a flag. It can either be outside of the supply depot, outside of the dragon command, 
tank factory, and the spawn area. You want to find the flag and hit it with a dragon strike. And once the flag has disappeared, you want to head back to Pack Punch and redo the lockdown. There's going to be four waves, and with every wave, you want to use the dragon strike during each wave. And once you have successfully completed all four waves, if you head back up to the crystal, you can now take your upgraded dragon strike. It'll do more damage, have a bigger radius, and you'll be able to use it twice instead of just once. Now, did you know that the monkey bombs can also be upgraded in Gorod Krovi? To upgrade this, you're going to need to get 50 kills with the monkey bombs. You're going to need a lot of max ammos. Once you get the set amount of kills, a zombie will drop a flask that you're going to have to pick up. Now, there are four candles and four vases scattered around the map, and each one is only visible to a specific player. So you want to run around the map and find your said candle and vase. For the candle, you're going to have to light it with the shield. After that, return to the spawn room, throw a monkey bomb in the grave, set your candle and vase down, and you will be rewarded with your upgraded monkey bomb. Now, the upgraded monkey bomb is very, very good. It'll kill any zombies that end up coming next to it. And uh, if you want to skip all that Easter egg stuff, just have the crate power gobble gum and just keep hitting the box until you get monkey bombs. You can also do it like that. Now, Goron Krovi decided to give the players a little thing called fashion. Now, you can equip yourself some dragon wings. To do this, you're going to have to do a couple of the following. You're going to have to ride the dragon to pack a punch from every single spot. So from Dragon Command, Tank Factory, and Supply Depot. You're also going to have to acquire the Dragon Strike. And you're going to have to acquire the Gauntlet of Siegfried. And once you do that, you'll be able to pick up the Dragon Wings. And when you equip it, you get the following. 30% Explosive Damage Resistance. 30% Fire Damage Resistance. Summoning the Dragon to go to pack a punch is now free. And as long as you are near the Dragon Summon platform, you can teleport to Pack Punch instantly instead of having to like ride it for like 30 seconds. You can also get the Mangler Helmet, and to get this, you just have to shoot off the Helmet of 5 Manglers and shoot off the Arm Cannon of 5 Manglers. And after that, you can equip the Helmet, and you will get 30% damage increase to Manglers and 50% damage reduction from the Manglers. And lastly, you can get the dope-ass Valkyrie Drone Hat. Just shoot off all the arms on 6 Valkyrie Drones, and shoot off the red camera on 6 Valkyrie Drones. And after that, you can equip it, and you will get 30% damage increase to Valkyrie Drones, 50% damage reduction, and 50% electrical damage reduction from the drones and from electrified zombies and or the traps. So like I said, Gorod Krovi definitely wanted to give you a little bit of a swag as you are walking around the map. Now one cool thing in Gorod Krovi that I really like is during the boss zombie when you're fighting Nikolai, just in the background, you can hear the Russian national anthem. And it's one of those things where like, it definitely fits and of course it's there, but it's like a really nice touch and, and I just really like it. You will be father for my minigun! Calm yourself, Russian! You must listen! We are your allies! <laughs> Now, this isn't really anything and more just reused assets, but that goddamn Shadows of Evil boat makes many appearances over here next to the river. It means next to nothing, but I'm, I'm going to keep pointing it out every time I see it. Now, in this map, Dr. Monty got really, really talkative, and we started to learn a lot more about him. He has a lot of audios for certain rounds and a lot of wisp audio that I'm definitely going to let you listen to right now. Go ahead and skip forward if this isn't really a thing, but I think it's interesting, so that's why I put it in here. I have been watching. I have seen each and every one of your misdeeds. I know who you are. Sounds ominous, doesn't it? Good, because it fucking is. The entirety of the universe is fractured and broken. Something that you clowns hold more than at least some degree of responsibility for. Guess what? You're gonna fix it. Look, just do what you usually do. Listen out for radios and things, and I'll help wherever I can. Hello? Testing, testing, te- Do you hear me? Testing, testing, te Actually, I don't know why I'm doing all this. I'm almost 100% certain that you can hear me. So let's not fanny about. Okay. Where best to start? The universe is big. Really big. So try to imagine the biggest thing that you can, and then imagine you're way off. It's a million, billion, trillion, uh, zillion times bigger than that. Actually, don't worry about the size. It's fucking huge. But just leave it at that. More important than its humongous proportions, 
is the fact that the universe is a living, breathing thing, ever-changing, ever-shifting, existing across and beyond time and space itself. With me so far? All right. So you've got this universe, this big, changey, already volatile universe, and then you shatter it with a hammer, a metaphorical hammer, and it cracks and splinters into a million other universes, all coexisting at exactly the same time. Do you have any idea how difficult that is to keep track of? I may be omnipotent, but I can't be everywhere. Now, if it had been entirely up to me, you numbskulls would be the last people I would entrust with this, but due to factors outside my control, you're all I've got. I know there's a lot going on. I know it's a lot to take in. But the universe is deeply unstable right now. And things are going to get a lot worse before they get better. Crazy as things are, I will try my absolute best to give you all some one-on-one -on -one time. Some good old-fashioned TLC. Do this right, and everything will be okay. Pinky promise. Maxis. <laughs> he was the first. The vessel you constructed for him back in World War I somehow shielded him from the influence of Element 115. He opened the portal between the worlds and, well, that's where and when shit really went tits up. The world within the world got turned upside down and inside out if you can imagine such a thing. So, anyway, uh, it was around then that I was forced to step in. Samantha, oh boy. You ever heard the phrase, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned? Well, that fury is even worse with a little girl, especially one as confused as that poor child is. She really didn't get much of a chance, did she? Right out of the gate, she was thrown into this madness before she could ever figure out exactly who she was. Still, that's all ancient history now. She's safe in the house. Okay, here's a quick cheat sheet. You all fought in World War I. Whoopee! You were badass heroes. That was true. That happened. Later, some other versions of you ended up as lab rats in some crazy World War II experiments. Experiments that left you a bit, kind of, not that smart. Your memories were mostly erased, and you just kind of bumbled and stumbled around in time and space, oblivious to your past and future actions. You know how people say that every snowflake is unique? That every single one is an individual, a one-of-a-kind, irrefutable evidence of the miracles of Mother Nature? Well, it's not true. Snowflakes aren't all that unique. There are really only about 12 different designs. The point I'm making is that you lot are hardly one-of-a-kind snowflakes. You were fragmented across a multitude of different realities. But each and every one is basically the same. You are all you. The liar, the braggart, the drunk. The one who didn't know what he had until it was gone. The good soldier. Never disobeyed orders, never broke protocol. Still kicked ass all the same. The loyal servant. A warrior out of time, born too late or born too early. Honor bound to dying traditions. The man-child, broken and twisted by a life burdened with knowledge. Living like a soul who is perpetually drowning. You need to stop thinking in terms of originals, old and new. It, it's not like that. When you look in the mirror, it's still you. If you crack that mirror, you see multiple reflections. It doesn't mean you've actually multiplied, does it? Honestly, I'm not sure why I'm trying to explain it. 
Shit's fucked up. Please fix it. You see, the thing is, I'm meant to stay on the sidelines. Not really supposed to get involved. Free will and all that stuff. Oh, uh, that was my idea, by the way. However, I do see stuff now and then that makes me go, ooh, ooh, that's not good. I really should do something. But the thing is, all I can really do is give things a little nudge. So a seed, plant an idea, see what grows, see what sticks. Where do you think all these magic weapon boxes come from? The chalk drawings on the wall, the magic ammo drops, the gumball machines? Do I need to go on, or do you get the message? I just hope you appreciate it. Okay, Nikolai, Dempsey, Takeo, I'm only talking to you right now. Brixhoven, he can't hear me, so he's, he's probably off doing his own thing right now anyway. No change there, I suppose. The good news is, you're nearly done. It'll soon be time to come to the house. But this plan, this big plan, a lot of it's been riding on Richthofen. Before he caught up with you guys, he spent years traveling, searching out just the right versions of you. The ones who held the key to closing off the other dimensions. I think you know by now exactly what that entails. Point is, he's kind of surplus to requirements these days. He's been in the house for ages, but we don't tell him. Anyway, uh, it all makes sense when you get here. You'll see. Honestly, it, it, it's going to be fine. Oh, shit. I completely forgot to introduce myself. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm Dr. Monty. Hello. So nice to see you all. And of course, Cyphers. So fucking many of them. They got really cypher happy, like in Black Ops 3. They, they did way too many, way too many. The first one reads as follows. Finally, the lab is almost complete. Security measures have been put in place so that the chance of detection by the Americans is very unlikely. We also have several agents embedded with the staff as insurance. We will keep the individual in stasis on ice, so to speak, and continue the specimen rotation once we have finished drawing more power from the drill. Oh, I also forgot. The sequencing from the current blood samples is as follows. S-S-M-J-A-B-R. If you don't know what that means, it means Samuel Stuhlinger, Marlton Johnson, Abigail Bright Brighton, Briarton, I think that's how you say it, and Russ Man. Cypher 2. Reality or dream, it is becoming harder and harder to tell. He came to me again last night when I was on my nightly walk through the countryside. He told me about the location of a book called The Cronorium. Said that Richthofen needs to acquire it if we are ever going to set things right. The book contains the location of a device called the Summoning Key. I will contact Richtofen in the morning. Cypher 3, Cronorium, Excerpt B. To allow quick travel between dimensions, the Keepers created the Transference device, which is powered by the Aether. The Keepers have placed structures throughout the realms. Cypher 4, Cronorium, Excerpt... A lot of numbers. Once the Great War ended with the defeat of the Apothecans, the Keepers ascended to become the wards of all universes. The surviving Apothecans were cast out, banished to the Dark Aether beneath creation. After eons of exile in the Dark Aether, the Apothecans evolved into twisted creatures that now bear little resemblance to their Keeper brethren. The Apothecans' ceaseless desire is to re-enter creation to consume and corrupt all the universes. It is the Keepers that guard against these perpetual attempts to re-enter creation and guard against any beings that may have fallen under the influence of the Apothecans. Cypher 5 It was a strange flight. The plane crashed. We passed through time and space, in a way, flying over areas that shouldn't have been there. Hmm. There was no signs of any remains. I do not know where it landed. Honest. Cypher 6. I know at some point in the future, I will be in a situation where I put the needs of the many ahead of my own life. I will save the world. Cypher 7. Things to get and do. Duct tape. Rope. Eggs. Finish reading that book. Poultry. Nails. Saw. World domination. Bleach. Compressor. Onions. Boiling water. Cypher 8. In the beginning, there were only the keepers. But then corruption of the Dark Aether leached its way into the realm and twisted the minds of some of the Keepers. Those Keepers turned into shadows of their former selves, and eventually became the Apothecans. Cypher 9. Cronorium excerpt... a lot of numbers. The Summoning Key is one of the oldest artifacts in all of creation. It was used by the first one to mix all of the dimensions with life, giving each one its unique balance. 
Under certain circumstances, it has the ability to form bridges between dimensions, allowing the transfer of life forces back and forth. It resides in the 63rd dimension of creation. Cypher 10, Cronorium Excerpt Numbers. The life force from the dead world allows the bear to flow with all creation. Cypher 11, Tony Hale Rap. Now where have I heard that name before? Hmm, I just can't remember. Anyway, better get to work as Mr. Rapt has paid me a handsome sum to investigate and gather the people and items he needs. After I am done here in Borg City, I have to head to San Francisco to interview the subjects. The idea of being trapped in that prison gives me the creeps. And you also can't forget the classic scraps of paper. And when put together, we get the following. My name is Pablo, or at least I think it is, or was. I don't even know anymore. I have been locked away, held prisoner in this cell for many months by German scientists. They keep experimenting on me, pumping me full of some blue liquid. I think it is responsible for the repeated visions I have been having, which I swear look and feel real. My name is Pablo Marinas, and I am a knight coming back from the Crusades. I fight in a great battle against strange demon-like creatures who are trying to devour the earth. At one point, it appears I am doomed, trapped in the tentacles of a great three-headed beast when suddenly four knights decimate it with magical elemental staves, saving me from certain death. There are other worldly creatures that fight on our side against the demons. The creepy thing is that the sigils on their tunics resemble the one I noticed on stones here at the castle as I was being brought to my cell. I just hope I can eventually find a way to escape this place. And the second scrap of paper reads, While I consider myself to be a brave king in battle, I will tell you, my son, that those four were the bravest warriors I have ever met. I had the privilege to fight alongside them in the great battle many years ago, where we defeated the creatures from beyond and the Dead Eaters. They disappeared after we claimed victory, never to be heard from again. The last thing they told me was to build my castle here and this very location before they disappeared. We also have a note that takes no decoding whatsoever, thank god. General Lemekul. That is not how you pronounce that at all. The dragons continued to bring success in the eastern front. Russian resistance is fierce, but we are maintaining the stronghold in Stalingrad. There are rumors of a new push to retake the city, but I am confident it will be stopped. The hatchery continues to experiment with ways to enhance the beast even further. Group 935 will not be technologically outpaced by the Russians. Diglock research continues to inspire new theories of time displacement and possibly even movement across dimensions. Security has been enhanced, especially after the disaster that was enabled by Dr. Groff's lax security measures. We have taken steps to ensure that none of this technology falls into enemy hands. However, I feel I must protest the behavior of this insufferable apparatus that we have been forced to contend with. Sophia, as it likes to be called, has demanded that we change the passwords to an encrypted cipher consisting entirely of unintelligible characters for maximum security. The current method is sufficiently secure without getting in the way of researchers performing their duties. Even if someone were able to obtain one of the special code cylinders, they would still need to know the password. While it is possible it could be guessed, it is easy for our researchers to remember due to its association with our die Glock research. Still, I feel it is sufficiently obscure that no one should be able to guess it easily. Respectfully yours, Harvey Yenna. And lastly, if you are in spawn and you look right here next to the challenges, you will see a sign that says, Vengeance is mine, VR. And it's very fitting that this sign is right here and being from Mr. VR, considering that the fountain is right there. And if that fountain looks familiar, it's been in almost every single World War II game that features Stalingrad. But you might remember it from this World at War mission. I need your help. Do what I say, and we can avenge this massacre. Rounding this video off on Revelations, we got two musical easter eggs. The first one is The Gift, one of my personal favorites. I love this song. There are three teddy bears around the map. All you have to do is hit them. The first one is going to be in the Mob of the Dead area. 
The next one is in the Verruckt portion of the map, and the last and final one is going to be right in the theater of Kino der Toten. The next musical easter egg is going to be every single zombie's musical easter egg in one, if that makes any sense. You want to head to Nocturne and Toten. There are going to be four little buttons around Nocturne and Toten that you have to hit very, very quick. Just watch the video, do exactly what I do, and once you hit all the buttons in under a certain amount of time, if you come back to the area where the original radio was in Nocturne and Toten, and you shoot this radio, you can pretty much swap between every single zombie's song. I don't just mean like the main easter egg songs, also like the background themes and everything. It, it pretty much has them all. But sadly, you can really only hear it as long as you're in Nocturne and Toten. If you leave Nocturne and Toten, you can't hear it anymore. Also in Revelations, there is a two-in-one easter egg. You can do one easter egg and get two different rewards at the same time, if that makes any sense. You can get the M1927 wall buy and the ability to swap weapons. All you have to do is head over to the Dur Eisendrack portion, activate the anti-gravity, and pick up this pink chalk. It's going to be in the same place every single time, right up here. Now around the map, there is some wall riding that is not where it should be. Just follow the order that I do and you'll get it every single time. In the DE Pyramid Room, you want to take the writing that says wish too often and your wishing well will run. And we're going to head over to the Verruckt power area on the floor and we're going to put that there and we're going to pick up Ascend from Darkness. Now Ascend from Darkness is going to come over here to Nocturne and Toten. We're going to pick up Salvation Lies Above. And Salvation Lies Above is also going to go in Nocturne and Toten over here at the other staircase. Next up, we head to Kino der Toten. We pick up a soul alone can follow the path. This is going to go all the way over here to Mob of the Dead. And we're going to trade it out for knowledge itself is for the taking. And we're going to take that wall writing back to Kino where we had picked up the Mob of the Dead one. And once you have all the chalk wall writing right where it should be, you can get the M1927 wall buy in the pyramid room. And you can also swap weapons at this little bench right here in Nocturne and Toten. See, so like I said, it's a two in one Easter egg. You do one Easter egg, you get two different rewards. Now, if you are doing the main easter egg, there are a couple side easter eggs you can do along the way. Once you get up to like step 10 of the main easter egg to the point where you get the teleporter and Kino der Toten ready, you want to head all the way back to spawn. You're going to pick up this spark. Now, once you pick this up, do not get hit by any zombies. I repeat, do not get hit by any zombies. You want to take it back to the teleporter and Kino and go to Samantha's room. Inside of Samantha's room, there's going to be a little music box on the shelf. If you place that spark right there, you get a couple different things. Number one, you get the ability to purchase Takio's Katana, the Path of Sorrows, from the board in the Shangri-La staircase for only 500 points. Now, this is a very good melee weapon as it's a one hit, one kill up until 42. But if you do that same exact thing, well, congrats. Now you have permanent wall power and crate power. So every single wall weapon you buy is going to be upgraded and every single mystery box pool is also going to be upgraded. Treyarch really went balls to the wall and was like, hey, we're just going to let you do pretty much everything in this map. Now, there are a bunch of different hats and helmets you can get in Revelations. The first one is going to be Al's hat, and this one really doesn't do anything. It's just for more style. Next is the dire wolf head. All you have to do is toss a grenade right into here where you would pick up the part for the wolf bow. 
A wolf skull will fall onto the ground, just get a bunch of kills next to it, and all your Q will let you know when you're done. And putting on this mask makes your sprint duration increase, and you can hear a howl when you kill like a bunch of zombies really, really fast. Next is the Helmet of Siegfried. In the DE area, a clock is going to be floating. You're going to have to shoot that until it says 935 on the dial. Next, you're going to need to fill four urns that are located in Der Isendrak, Origins, Verruckt, and the Kino area with a bunch of zombies. And once you do that, you can pick up this helmet, and this will allow you to have one more zombie hit. So basically it gives you purple jug. And if you get a bunch of kills in a short amount of time, you can hear the sound of a horn. Next is the Margwa head. To get this, you're going to need to kill two different Margwas with only using one shot to each of the head. And putting this mask on will give you 50% damage reduction from all Margwa attacks, do 33% more damage to Margwas, and your sprint duration will increase. You can also get the Fury head. And all you have to do to get this one is kill a bunch of Furies and not use Wonder Weapons. And the effects are 33 damage reduction from all Fury melee attacks. You do 50% more damage to the Furies, and you can survive one more hit from zombies, aka Purple Jug. Next is the Keeper Skull Head. First, you're going to have to have built the Keeper Protector. Then you will have to let the Keeper Protector kill a bunch of zombies. And this next step is kind of interesting because you either need to kill a bunch of Keepers with the Corruption Turret, or if you already have the Direwolf Mask unlocked, this thing will already be unlocked. And putting this mask on, it gives you Purple Jug, 50% damage reduction from the Keepers, you do 33% more damage, and the Keeper Protector lasts 30 seconds longer. Next is the Helmet of the King. All you have to do is kill two Panzers, one by shooting it in the head, and the other one has to be killed by shooting it in its power core. After that, kill a bunch of zombies with traps, and then you get the Helmet of the King. You get 50% damage reduction from boss attacks, you deal 33% more damage to bosses, no damage from any elemental zombies death effects, and your sprint duration increases. Next is the Apothecan Mask. All you have to do is head inside to the Pack Punch area, get in the Stomach Acid, and when the green gas is present, you gotta kill a bunch of different types of enemies. Just kill anything that comes at you. You're gonna need about 15 Parasites, 5 Keepers, 15 Spiders, 10 Furies, 50 Zombies, and 3 Marguas. But they cannot be of the same type. And once you put this bad boy on, you get Purple Jug, Purple Stamina, you do 15% more damage against all enemies, and you get 33% damage reduction from all enemies. So this one is definitely the best, and in my opinion, it's very, very easy to get. Now in Revelations, there are also a bunch of Wisp audio and some Dr. Monty audio pertaining to each particular character. And you know me, if I think it's interesting enough, I'm definitely going to put it in here. Tank Dempsey once bet $50 that he could eat 50 hard-boiled eggs in 15 minutes. It's rumored that Tank Dempsey's real name is Thomas. Nah, not true. <laughs> it's Ringo. Oh, he's joking. <laughs> or am I? Tank Dempsey holds the all-time record for one-arm push-ups, even in the universe where everyone only had one. On over 18 million occasions, Dempsey gave his life for the sake of his team. He's a bona fide American hero. Tank Dempsey once caught his testicles in the springs of a bed frame, and he lived to tell the tale. So remember, kids. Keep your mattresses tight. Dempsey can throw a grenade further, farther, than the greatest professional baseball players. He attributes the skill to his solitary arm training regime. The only time Tank Dempsey ever feared for his life was 15 minutes after taking an ill-advised bet. Nikolai once bottle-fed vodka to a bear cub. They both regretted it before and after. Nikolai Belinsky's grasp of the pros and cons of capitalist and communist economies is tenuous at best. Nikolai loved his wife. He was never the same after she died. Nikolai once had a brother. I don't know why he forgot him. For many years, I tried watering down Nikolai's vodka. He just drank more. Nikolai's breath is legendary, even though no one has ever actually smelled it. At one point, or some point, Nikolai used to be a writer. He kept journals of his many travels in Europe. Much of it grossly exaggerated, of course. Apparently, Richthofen has a problem with nuts. Make of that what you will. 
At the orphanage, Edward told everyone his dad was a famous scientist. They scrawled, Teddy is a liar, on the schoolyard wall. Edward doesn't like spicy food. His brain gets distracted. Bad things happen. Richthofen's favorite song is My Way. He wonders when he will get to sing it. Edward Richthofen has trouble sleeping without a teddy bear, a problem that didn't present itself until he was an adult. Richthofen has a desperate need to feel appreciated. His ego is actually very fragile. Takeo has never once tasted American chocolate. I made sure I spared him that particular brand of suffering. The extent of Takeo's suffering at the hands of Division 9 is far, far worse than you can imagine. Takeo has a secret hobby. He does not speak of it for fear that he will be mocked. Takeo is actually pronounced Takeo, or is it Takeo, Takeo? It's one of life's biggest mysteries. Takeo knows that somewhere, sometime, he wasn't betrayed. He was honored. Throw a grape in the air. Takeo Masaki can slice it clean in half, even without a katana. Also, one cool thing that they put on this map is when the round changes, if you are in different sections of the map, the round change music is going to be different. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's a very small detail about this map, but it's still pretty freaking cool. Now, Revelations also gave us some more time trials. There's going to be four of them. If you complete round five in under five minutes, you're going to get the Nunchucks. If you can complete round 10 in under 13 minutes, you're going to get the Skull Splitter. If you complete round 15 in under 24 minutes, you're going to get the Buzz Cut. And if you can complete round 20 in under 32 minutes, you are going to get the Nightbreaker. Now, those are all cool and everything, but the Path of Sorrows is still infinitely better. Now, very similar to Shadows of Evil, there's also a way to upgrade your little Arnie's. And in my opinion, this one's very, very easy. All you got to really do is just get a bunch of kills with little Arnie's. I'm talking like 150 kills, somewhere in that ballpark. Get a bunch of kills with little Arnie's, get a bunch of max ammos. And once you think you have enough, you want to toss a little Arnie into the church. And if the church gladly accepts that donation, they will refill your little Arnie's, except for these little Arnie's that you get refilled are going to be upgraded. So like I said, very, very easy. I like it. 
And in Revelations, they also made getting a free perk extremely easy. Head to the DE section of the map, wait for anti-gravity, and do this little hardcore parkour section. Once you kind of get it down, it's really easy to do over and over again. But if it's like your first time trying it, you're going to need a couple. <laughs> you might need a couple tries. That last jump, like sticking onto the cylinder, can be kind of a bitch. But you don't have to do any stupid Easter eggs or anything. You just have to, like, get good. Now, there are a bunch of really interesting noises located around the map. They brought back the random Shinanuma whispering. And they also have some really creepy whispering over here in Kino der Toten on the stage. And my favorite, they brought back the insane Varuk screaming. And one of the more creepy, scary ones is in Mob of the Dead, it literally sounds like you can hear, like, the gateway to hell. And one of the more interesting ones is in the Origins area. If you come up to this truck, you can hear it constantly flipping through different radio stations. Now, I'm kind of thankful for this. There's not too many ciphers on Revelations. There's only a couple, and thank God. I was getting really tired of, like, those 12-plus ciphers, man. But the first one reads, I am the last of us, but I will be joining you soon, my friends. Cough, cough. Death is near. I hope what we have done does not come back to bite this universe in the ass. Thank God we will all be gone, because if Monty ever found this place, we would be in a world of shit. Maybe now, with all of us gone, the children will be safe. D. Cypher 2. From all of us at Treyarch, it has been a fun and amazing experience making zombies with you these last eight years. Without your love and input, none of this could have been possible. Thank you for playing. Cypher 3. Thanks to the sacrifice of Maxis and the contraption called Sophia, all the 115 has been purged from the final universe. Thank fucking god. Time to get some rest. M. Cypher 4. October NSA Report T. They found the source on Venus, beginning extraction. And now actually just looking at all these ciphers, I think there's a bunch of unsolved ciphers on this map as well. So yeah, no, they did have like 12 of them, my god. But so far, only a handful of them have actually been solved. So that is going to be today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys learned something new and thought it was entertaining. And if you guys did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And most importantly, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And also, thank you to Enlisted for sponsoring today's video. I think World War II is fascinating, and it's definitely one of my favorite topics to learn about. So getting sponsored by a game that heavily focuses on World War II and historical accuracy is pretty freaking awesome. So shout out to Enlisted. Make sure to check them out. Link will be down there below in the description. Give it a try. Get all your goodies. Go have some fun playing an actual good World War II game.